The early 90s Rockford Fosgate Punch 150 HD is up for amp dyno testing today. That's right, this amplifier hit the market around 1991 with the hybrid design technology. Original Punch 150 is in the mid 80s, but again, we're going to look at this one. We're looking at the 92 car audio and electronics directory here and see it lists for $515 back then. That's equivalent to $1,175 in 2025. Dealers back in the 90s had these demo boards with one amp powering up to 16 speakers. We've shown that before in previous videos as well. As far as ratings for the Punch 150, 4 ohms 75 by 2, 2 ohms 90 by 2, or bridged 8 ohms 150 watts, or 180 watts bridged at 4 ohms. Even back in the day, Rockford stated these produce 91% more power than their rated specifications. Well, we'll find that out, of course. First, we're going to set the overlap for the amp dyno test. What we do here is set it to 10 dB of overlap. That's to match both channels to the amp dyno as well as to the head unit. Start off with the two channel test. And again, we're going to do all the tests today. So 8 ohms is first. There's no ratings at 8 ohms. Let's try it and find out what we get. Around 13 and a half volts, certified to 1% distortion, right at 59 watts per channel, 13.65. Let's reset the dyno and try it up to clipping. Running the one kilohertz test here again. And again, right at 60 watts per channel, 13.65 volts. Reset the dyno here and try the dynamic test. Try that pulse tone of one kilohertz, that beep, beep, beep. You know what I'm talking about? That sound that drives you crazy. About exactly the same, so not a whole lot of interest here. All about 59 to 60 watts per channel. Now let's try it at four ohms. It's rated 75 watts by two at 12 volts. Certified test up to 1% distortion. Let's find out what we get. 110 watts per channel at 13.57. Let's drop the voltage though to around 12, about 12 and a half. Let's see what we get. Easily get that 75 by two. We get 91 watts by two at 12.37. And we're gonna bump the voltage up and see what we get around 14 volts. This amplifier is unregulated, so it does benefit from higher voltage. There you can see 112 watts per channel, 14.2. Next up, we're gonna try uncertified to clipping. One kilohertz. 4 ohm stereo and here we can see 110 watts per channel 13.57 pretty close to the certified test what about dynamically when we send that pulse tone into the amp here you go 104 watts and it jumps up 108 per channel pretty close there channel measurements 13.64 volts now let's try two ohms. It's rated 90 watts by two at 12 volts. Here, let's start off with one kilohertz track around 13 and a half volts. And there you go, 166, 161, 13.46. What about dropping it to 12 and a half volts? Try it at lower voltage, what can we get? Still easily get that power. 137, 134, 12.3. Let's jack up the voltage now to over 14 volts. See what we get with more juice. And yes, we get more power. 182, 176 at 14.09. Reset the dyno here for the uncertified track up to the clipping point. Again, using the one kilohertz tone. And here we go. We get 165, 161, 13.46. Again, four watts difference in those numbers is not very much. I know some of you say that channel two is weaker, but as you'll see here, channel two is actually stronger. How you like them apples? 183, 184, 13 and a half volts. Now we're gonna drop it down to one ohm. This amp is not rated for one ohm stereo, but we're gonna try it here. One kilohertz with dynamic test. And check this out. We're getting over 600 watts with both channels over 300 watts per channel at 14 volts, crazy. Now let's bridge the amp to mono and try it. First up eight ohms, it's rated 150 watts at 12 volts. We're gonna do these tests at 40 hertz because if you're gonna bridge it, most likely you're gonna run it to subwoofers. 212 watts bridge, 13.65 volts. 
reset the dyno here to uncertified, which takes us up to the clipping point. And there you can see quite a bit more, 223, 13.61. Reset it once again here and try the dynamic track with a pulse tone of 40 hertz. So kind of like a subwoofer kick, kicking your amplifier dyno, kicking your screen with the big voice of Big D, 216 watts, 13.59. Now what about four ohms mono? It's rated 180 watts at 12 volts. Here we go, certified test to 1% distortion. We get 313 at 13.53. Now what about if we drop the voltage down to 12 and a half and try it again? There you go, 261. Again, this amplifier is hugely dependent on your voltage, even though these differences in wattage you probably never hear, but it's still interesting to see the numbers. We bumped it up to 14 volts, and there you can see 350 at 14.16 certified. We'll reset the dyno here for the uncertified test at four ohms bridged, 40 hertz. Let's see what we get here up to the clipping point. And there you go, we're closing in on 350, 339 at 13.5. Again, it's rated 180 watts bridge, so it's literally doing double the power. Dynamic sends that pulse tone, 40 hertz into the amp. Here you can see 337, jumped up 359 at 13.61. Now this amp is not rated and is not recommended for two ohms mono, but you know us, we're gonna try it for the test. We do have the voltage up to around 14. Now it didn't run the 40 hertz test cleanly. As you see, the power kind of jumped around, the numbers didn't count cleanly. So we did try it with the one kilohertz track, and it did count cleanly for one kilohertz. And you can see here, 464 watts at two ohms, 14.03. We'll reset the dyno for the uncertified track and we'll go back to the 40 hertz track because again, you want to use this with subwoofers. And here you can see <laughs> big numbers for 180 watt amp, 454, 14.11. We're smiling all the way to the old school punch dealer. Dynamic RMS, check this out. We're closing in on 600 watts at two ohms bridge. It's not rated to handle that, but it handles it with flying colors, 577 at 14 volts. Yo, what about if we try the dynamic test with one kilohertz and check this out. We're well over 650 watts. We're at 656 at two ohms bridged, 14.18. Now you know we were dumb enough to try two ohms mono. What do you think? We're gonna drop it below two ohms? 40,000 at zero ohm zero well it's not zero ohms but you'll see here what we try this amplifier at let's try 1.6 ohms bridge that's 0.8 per channel dynamic one kilohertz check this out over 722 watts 14.21 from 150 watt amp craziness but we're not done yet 1.33 bridge again that's bridged and here you can see it, 728, 734, 741, <laughs> yo, 14.13. But we're gonna drop it to one ohm dynamic, which is stupid, that's half an ohm per channel for this vintage amp that's over 30 years old, and it handles it. It does not blow up, my friends. It handles it like a champ, 679 at 14.13. Well, friends, if you were blown away as much as me, you can pause this and see all the different tests. I showed you every single test on this sheet, which was a whole bunch. Figured you guys wanted to see it here. Now, make sure you check out links in the video description if you want to pick up a new t-shirt. I'm creating new designs all the time. You can pick one up. It helps me out, helps support my channel, helps make me happy. That's what y'all want, right? Big D to be happy. But yes, we have even more with the Punch 150 HD. We're going to put the quad box into the Sequoia. We're gonna close the trunk. We're gonna blow our eardrums just for you guys to give you some more content. We're here in the Sequoia with the Punch 150 hooked up to the 412's SSA meter down there in the kick. Again, it's Bluetooth connected to the phone here. So we're gonna get DB rating here, but it's measured from the kick panel. Let's try 48 Hertz. See what we get. Are you ready? Here we go.
Sorry for the tease there. This is just the extended amp dyno test for the Punch 150 HD. If you want to see more about the history, all the features, all the specifications, you want to see it pushing subwoofers and also the SPL test, make sure you check out Wilson Audio Labs on YouTube because you're going to see all you want to see and more. Till next time, this is Big D and I'm out of here.